Hi there folks, this is Apple Geek. Well, time sure flies, and the hiatus will be ending soon. Season 8 is... Wait, what's that? The premiere is this weekend? Ah! Okay, I gotta get this done fast, so hold on to your tails. I wished for a lot last season, and to my great surprise, just about every wish on my list came true. I wanted to see how things were progressing with the new Changeling Kingdom under Thorax's rule. Yep, that happened. It looks like they're doing pretty well for themselves, and while I certainly wasn't expecting the introduction of Pharynx, that was a nice bonus. I had hoped to see some character growth for Flurryheart, but I knew it would be difficult with her being just a foal, so I was pleasantly surprised when she appeared early in the season in a flurry of emotions. Clearly that was meant to be more of a Twilight-focused episode, but still, we got to see a lot more personality for her than we've seen before, and she was just too adorable for words. I know she's not everyone's favorite, but I love the little munchkin, and I hope we get to see her in more episodes in the future. I had high hopes for Trixie, as she's really grown on me these last couple seasons, and I wanted to see her really get a solid chance to make up for some of her past misdeeds. I was pleasantly surprised, once again, by seeing her have a significant role in not just one, but two episodes this season. Of course, she still has a lot to learn, but I loved watching her start to learn how to do real magic spells, as I could tell that it was really a special moment for her. It's also clear that Starlight's friendship means the world to her, and I was happy to see her help Sunburst and Starlight reconnect as friends. Of course, Mon Pai helped as well, and she also played a significant role in two episodes this season. She wasn't on my wish list at all, but I'll gladly throw in an honorable mention for her because Mod is awesome. Speaking of Starlight, I wanted to see her graduate from being a student of Twilight and see her rise to new challenges, whatever those might be. Well, she did graduate, right in the season premiere, no less. As for rising to new challenges, I still think she has big things ahead of her, but I very much enjoyed watching her learn more about friendship with Trixie, Mod, and Sunburst. She also played a great supporting role in Fame and Misfortune, and let's not forget her biggest achievement yet, namely having the guts to switch Celestia and Luna's cutie marks around to allow them to get a better understanding of one another. On that note, I was practically begging for a Slice of Life episode for Celestia, and boy did I ever get it! It was so much more than that, though. In addition to seeing some of the Royal Sisters' daily tasks, we also learned that Celestia too has a dark side, and we got to see some disharmony between her and Luna, thus proving that they're just ordinary ponies that have a lot of the same problems as those they rule over. It's also now much easier to see how they once fell away from each other, leading to Luna becoming Nightmare Moon, and it's heartwarming to see how they truly do care about each other despite their differences. On the subject of family connections, I wanted to finally meet the parents of both Rainbow Dash and Applejack. Yep, both of those things happened. Dash's parents are quite the colorful characters, and it's great to see them now being able to celebrate their daughter's achievements. I also love how they've already practically adopted Scootaloo. And of course, who could forget the introduction of Bright Macintosh and Pear Butter in one of the most bittersweet love stories ever told. Perfect Pear is of course my personal number one favorite MLP episode, and while we still don't know what tragedy actually occurred, we know that the Apple parents were truly wonderful ponies, full of love and life, and their legacy will live on in our hearts forever. I really wanted to see the CMCs travel beyond Ponyville to help others in need. Once again, check! While it technically wasn't a cutie mark issue, it was a lot of fun getting to see them sneak along to our town with Big Mac, and try to help him win Sugar Bell's affection. Regardless of the reason they were there, this was their first real adventure outside of Ponyville, as the train ride to the Crystal Empire a few seasons ago didn't really count. I'm still waiting for the cutie map to call them on a mission, but even if that doesn't happen, I will always look forward to seeing them find other ponies to help in any way they can. And speaking of the cutie map, which is an extension of the Tree of Harmony, I said that I wanted to see the elements of Harmony used again, since we haven't really seen them since the end of Season 4. Once again, I got my wish, and in the most epic way possible. The main seven successfully saved the Pillars of Equestria from the Void, and though they also accidentally released the Pony of Shadows, they were able to once again harness the elements of Harmony, and along with the help of the Pillars, they banished him to the Void once again, but not before saving Stygian from his clutches. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff happened in Season 7. The only two things I didn't technically get to check off my list were wanting to see Discord get to use the full extent of his power in some form of hero role, and see something come of the unfinished business with Chrysalis and the increasing number of world allies that Equestria is acquiring. It seems that Hasbro is really playing the long game with the world allies in Chrysalis, so I'm sure whatever they end up doing with those story threads is going to be truly epic and worth the wait. I'm also not too disappointed about not getting my wish with Discord, because we still got Discord and Harmony, one of the absolute best Discord episodes to date. Given whatever it is we seem to be building towards for a series finale, I'm sure he will get his chance to really shine as a hero soon enough. So with that recap done, let's move on to my new wish list for Season 8. First up on my list is a big one. I want to see an Ultimate CMC episode. I'm talking all the Crusaders, including honorary ones. 
Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, Scootaloo, Bab Seed, Gabby, and even Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Let's face it, we are way past due for a follow-up story surrounding Diamond Tiara, given what was revealed to us about her in Crusaders of the Lost Mark, and we still know practically nothing about Silver Spoon's backstory. I know these characters have essentially fulfilled their original purpose, but like all characters, they have evolved throughout the show, and I feel like they deserve some time in the spotlight. We also haven't seen Bab Seed in forever, and given that she was once running around being a bully with Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, I think it would be awesome for Babs to come full circle by helping Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon with some kind of a problem. Having Gabby in the mix would be fun too, but there are other story possibilities for her. That brings me to item number two. I want to see another Griffins episode, one that involves Gabby, Gilda, and Greta, who as you may recall is the friend Gilda had at the end of the Lost Treasure of Griffinstone way back in Season 5. I'd love to see how Griffinstone is progressing with the seeds of friendship having been planted there by Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash, not to mention Gabby's never-ending optimism. I'm not sure how that story would even relate to our pony friends in Ponyville, but hey, an episode focused on Griffins with ponies just as secondary or background characters would certainly make for an interesting twist. Number three in the returning secondary character department is Lightning Dust. This is a repeat from a past wish list. I really liked her character, and I would love to see her come back and get a second chance at a shot in the Wonderbolts. With Dash as a fully active member now, I can imagine there being a great story where Lightning Dust would be trying her hardest to show that she had changed, and Dash would be struggling to give her a fair chance due to the history with her back at the Wonderbolts Academy. Another Pegasus I really want to see a story around is Derpy, aka Muffins. She's been showing up an awful lot in cameo appearances in the last couple seasons, and slowly but surely, it feels like a serious story is being built up around her. She's such a great pony, one who means so much to so many people, and it would be awesome for her to finally get a true moment in the spotlight. I can't think of a better way for that to happen than to have her take on a pivotal role in a story where Scootaloo finally confronts her disability. A backstory episode on Scootaloo is also something I've been wanting to happen, so I'm making this a two-for-one wish. If Scootaloo gets to interact with Derpy in an episode about dealing with disabilities, I'm positive it will go down as one of the greatest episodes of all time in MLP history. I must also once again state that I desperately want a Zakora backstory episode. I thought we were going to get one in A Health of Information, but while it gave us a slight bit of character growth for Zakora, the story ended up focusing on Fluttershy instead. Of course, I can't complain about having not one, but two separate appearances of Zakora this past season, especially after her being absent for so long, but I still think she deserves a proper backstory episode. As far as family connections go, we've now met the families of all the main six, but we still know nothing about Starlight's family. I'm honestly not sure what a story surrounding her parents would look like, but even though Starlight has really grown up a lot, it feels like we're missing a big part of her story without understanding what her family connections were like. The perfect pair was a perfect example of how powerful family relationships can be, so I'm really hoping that Hasbro won't leave us hanging on the subject of Starlight's family. And on the subject of families, I'm very curious as to how the relationship is progressing between Big Mac and Sugar Bell. I would say it's moving along pretty well, seeing as how Sugar Bell was briefly seen paying a visit to Sweet Apple Acres this past season. I'd love to see Sugar Bell interact with the rest of the Apple family, and I'm starting to wonder if we're going to see another pony wedding before the final curtain call on Friendship is Magic. I'm not sure it will happen in Season 8, but I think it would be awesome to see, and I think it would also be a great opportunity to get some more flashbacks of Bright Mac and Pear Butter. Come on Hasbro, please make this happen! And speaking of flashbacks, I still think it would be really cool to see a hearthswarming episode where all the main six's families, and perhaps even Starlight's, all gather at Twilight's castle for a holiday party. That would be an excellent opportunity for some very interesting character interactions, not to mention all the parents embarrassing their children with childhood stories. Perhaps this would also be a great way to introduce Starlight's parents. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. It's pretty safe to say that the return of the Pillars of Equestria was a shock to just about everyone. It's unclear what their roles will be in the future, but I'm hoping that we'll at least see them popping up every now and again. I for one would personally pay good money to see an episode where Apple Bloom gets to meet Rock Hoof. And of course I'd love to see Twilight get to geek out even more over Star Swirl. One thing's for sure though, with the Pillars and the Elements of Harmony now both active again, if a war with Chrysalis or any other villain occurs, Equestria is definitely a force to be reckoned with now. And finally, my last item, movie tie-ins. I've heard there's supposed to be some continuity with the MLP movie in Season 8. At this time though, I have no idea to what extent that will be. I suspect the return of the Hippogriffs will at least be mentioned in some capacity, since it looked like Princess Celestia and Queen Novel were pretty good friends. I also would love to see Tempest, er, Fizzle Pop Berry Twist, find a place for herself in Equestria. 
Captain of the Royal Guard sounds like a pretty good job title to me, and seeing how useless those guards have been in the past, I'm willing to bet she would be a great candidate for getting them trained properly. All that said, the voice actors for the characters from the movies don't come cheap, so I have my doubts we'll see very much of them in the TV series. Still though, I want the events of the movie to be meaningful in the general canon of the show, so at this point, if we get anything beyond mere passing mentions of the characters or events from the movie, I'll be ecstatic. So there you have it, my Season 8 wish list. finally. For me, Season 7 was easily the best season of Friendship is Magic yet, so I'm not sure how it can be topped. But some friends of mine who have seen the linked episodes for Season 8 have been really hyping it up, so I'm expecting fantastic things. I look forward to watching this whole season with all of you, so stay tuned for Season 8 of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. What about this one? Sea Pony Etiquette isn't going to help right now, Spike.